Hello and welcome to the fifth and final part of unit 13. In this part, we are going to work some more angular momentum examples, both of which involve conservation of angular momentum. Now this first example has a pretty large setup. We have a uniform rod. You're given the mass of the rod and its length. And we're told it's free to rotate about an axis um, perpendicular to its length through its center. There are two small beads. They have the same mass and they're mounted to grooves along the rod. They're initially held in place 16 centimeters from the axis of rotation, but the, the, the catches are going to release the rod, the beads can slide outward. Um, before that happens, the velo angular velocity of the rod bead collection is 13 radius per, radians per second. And we want to know what's the new angular velocity when the beads are at the end of the rod or when they fly off completely. Let's begin by drawing a picture of the initial situation. Here is the rod and the axis of rotation halfway down the middle. So this is 50 centimeters and this is 50 centimeters to within my ability to draw them here. The beads are initially say here and here, both of which are 16 centimeters from the axis of rotation. The angular not angular, sorry, moment of inertia initially will be the moment of inertia of the rod plus the moment of inertia of the beads. The moment of inertia about of a rod about its center is given by 1 12th times the mass of the rod times the length of the rod squared. Since the beads are identical mass and identical positions, I'm going to combine them and use a factor of 2. We're going to treat them as point masses, so that will be 2 times the mass of the beads times the radius of the beads, or the distance the beads are from the axis squared. Plugging in 1 12th, the mass of the rod was given in the problem to be 0.23 kilograms. The length of the rod is 1 meter. The mass of the beads is 0 0.028 kilograms and they're initially located 16 centimeters from the axis of rotation. This works out to be an initial moment of inertia of 0 0.0206 kilogram meter squared. We can now find the initial angular momentum. It will be the initial moment of inertia multiplied by the initial angular velocity. That will be 0 0.0206 kilogram meter squared times the 13 radians per second that was provided in the problem, working out to initial angular momentum of 0 0.2678 kilogram meter squared per second. The first question in the problem wants to know how does the angular velocity change? if the beads are now at the end of the rod. Because the beads have changed position, the moment of inertia of the beads or of the bead rod system has changed. I'm going to call this location two because we do have a, a follow up with the beads off of the rod. In this case, the moment of inertia will again be the moment of inertia of the rod plus of the beads. The rod hasn't changed. That will still be 1 12th mass of the rod, length of the rod squared. What has changed is the value of, the, of R for the beads because they're no longer at 16 centimeters. They're now at 50 centimeters. Plugging again, again, I'm not going to plug in for the um, rod because that didn't change from the previous one, but just to bring home the fact that it is the 0 0.5 meters squared, the radius of the beads that has changed. 
that gives us a new moment of inertia of 0 0.03317 kilogram meters squared. It is larger, as we might have expected, because we have more mass distributed further away from the axis of rotation. I can now use conservation of angular momentum. The initial angular momentum has to equal the angular momentum at what I'm calling stage two. This angular momentum will be the moment of inertia for this stage times the angular velocity at this stage. And that has to equal the 0 0.2678 kilogram meter squared that I found previously. Plugging in that the angular momentum is 0 0.03317 kilogram meters squared for stage two, that gives the angular velocity is now 8.07 radians per second. So the angular velocity has decreased because we now have more mass distributed further from the axis. A good example of this that isn't beads on a um, rod would be a figure skater. When the figure skater goes from having their arms out and spinning to bringing their arms in and tucking everything very close to their the, the core of their body about the axis of rotation, the figure skater speeds up. That's exactly the opposite of what happened here. Here we're going from in to out, the figure skater is going from out to in, but the change in angular velocity is the same. It rotates faster when the mass is closer to the center. Lastly, the beads fly off. So I'm going to call this stage three, and the only thing that I have left at stage three is the rod. So the moment of inertia in this case is going to be just the moment inertia of the rod. That'll be one half or one twelfth, sorry, times the mass of the rod times the length of the rod squared, and that works out to be 0 0.01917 kilogram meter squared. I can now say that the moment of inertia at this stage has to equal the initial moment of inertia I calculated. This will be I3 times omega 3, and that has to equal 0 0.2678 kilogram meter squared. Plugging in that the moment of inertia at this stage is 0 0.01917 allows me to calculate that the new angular velocity is 13.97 radians per second, which is larger than the rods or the rod with the beads was initially rotating. But again, this makes sense because I have um, changed the distribution of the mass. I've gotten rid of a little bit of the mass in this case which is going to cause it to speed up. For the last example, we're going to deal with a merry-go-round. We're given the radius and the moment of inertia of the merry-go-round, and then we have a boy that runs tangent to the rim at a speed of 4.4 meters per second and jumps on. We're going to assume that the merry-go-round was initially at rest, and we want to find what's going on afterwards. The easiest way to illustrate what is going on is to do a top view. So here is my merry-go-round, and here is the boy, and the boy is going to run straight and jump on the edge of the merry-go-round. So initially, it looks like this with the boy having a momentum. And after the boy jumps on, it's going to look like boy sitting on the merry-go-round, merry-go-round rotating. Okay. Remember initially the merry-go-round is not moving. Therefore the initial angular momentum of the boy merry-go-round system is all 
contained in the fact that the boy is running at the merry-go-round. As we saw in part three, when dealing with a point particle moving like this, the angular momentum is most easily found using RP sine theta. The momentum is going to be the mass of the child um, multiplied by his velocity. And then the quantity R sine theta works out to be the radius, the distance from the observation point to the line of travel, in which case this is the radius of the merry-go-round. I go through this in part three, so if you did not catch it there, please go back and rewatch. So that's the mass of the boy times the velocity of the boy times the radius of the merry-go-round, which works out to be 638 kilogram meter squared per second. After the boy jumps on, the moment or the angular momentum is found by the moment of inertia of the system times the angular velocity. The moment of inertia of the system will be the moment of inertia of the child plus the moment of inertia of the merry-go-round. Oops. Again, multiplied by the angular velocity. The moment of inertia of the child will be the child's mass multiplied by the radius of the merry-go-round squared, assuming we can treat the child as a point particle. A little bit of a stretch, but we're going to go with it. The moment of inertia of the merry-go-round is provided in the problem. It's 732 kilogram meters squared. This has to equal, by conservation of angular momentum, the initial momentum, which allows me to find that the final angular velocity of the merry-go-round child system will be the initial angular momentum, the 638 kilogram meter squared per second, divided by the mass of the boy times the radius of the merry-go-round squared, plus the moment of inertia of the merry-go-round, and that works out to be 0 0.583 radians per second. This concludes this part, and it concludes Unit 13.